In this video, I will explain the fallacy called the Texas Sharpshooter fallacy. I'll begin with the general form, explain why it is a mistake, and use some examples of people making this sort of mistake. Hopefully, by the end of the video, you will be able to spot and deal with this fallacy. And if not, well, every video that I have made has been liked by many people, and every subscriber to this channel has done so after watching one of my videos. And so should you. So go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. Fallacies are a mistake in how we think. The Texas Sharp Shooter fallacy occurs when analyzing data and you reach the conclusion that a particular grouping or cluster in the data must be due to a particular cause. The name of this fallacy comes from an old story about a man from Texas who for some reason one day found himself shooting at a wall. After firing his bullets, he walked up to the wall and drew a target around each bullet hole, and in doing so gave the impression that every one of his shots landed straight in the middle of a target. In other words, people looking at the wall would think that he was an excellent marksman, when in reality, he was just shooting randomly at the wall. So the general form is, analyze some data, like a wall with bullet holes, observe clusters in the data. For example, you see every bullet hole is in a target, Conclude that there must be a cause to these clusters. For example, the Texan must be an excellent marksman. The mistake is in the conclusion, attributing a cause to the clusters. The data alone is not sufficient to attribute any cause. Now, it is possible that there is something causing the clustering, but to determine this requires more work. Just identifying clusters in the data is not enough because it is also possible that these clusters occurred by chance. Any argument claiming or implying a cause must also demonstrate that it wasn't due to chance. The other point to make is that the way that you analyze the data and identify clusters is also important, particularly with historical data. Identifying clusters essentially requires two things, a center point and a radius the size and position of which can affect which data points fall inside a particular cluster. The point here is that one can be biased when analyzing data and only identify clusters that agree with this bias. Let's look at some examples of people making this sort of mistake. The first example concerns cholera. Back in the 19th century, cholera was one of the deadliest diseases affecting Britain. At the time, people thought it was spread through bad air. In 1854, another cholera outbreak occurred in the London district of Soho, and the physician John Snow decided to investigate. After talking to the locals, he was able to draw a map of the infections in this area. And by doing so, he noticed a clustering of cases in a particular part of Soho. Now, if at this point you were to conclude that there was a cause behind this clustering, for example, saying that by living in this one part of Soho, this causes you to catch cholera, this would be a mistake. It would be the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. However, in the case of Jon Snow, he did not stop there. He did not make this mistake. Instead, he used the clustering to form a theory, and he then tested the theory. His theory was that a single water pump in the area was responsible for spreading the disease. Yes, the pump was inside the clustering, but he knew he needed evidence before he could blame the water pump. To do this, Jon Snow convinced the council to remove the handle from the pump, forcing the locals to get their water from elsewhere. After doing this, cases of cholera dropped and the clustering previously observed was no longer there. Jon Snow now had the evidence to claim the disease was spread through contaminated water rather than bad air. Eventually, it was discovered that the water for the pump was polluted by sewage contaminated with cholera from a nearby cesspit. I use this example because it contains the makings of a Texas sharpshooter fallacy. However, Jon Snow did not make this mistake. Instead, he used the observed clustering as a clue, a clue from which he developed a theory that he was able to test. For me, this is the way to deal with an observed clustering. 
The second example concerns the stars. On a clear night, looking up at the sky, you will see many stars. Throughout the ages, humans of various cultures have also looked up at the stars and wondered why they are there. Some decided to draw constellations, collections of stars in a particular part of the sky that appeared to look like something, an animal perhaps, or a mythological creature. Imagine someone making the following argument. Look at these stars. Together, they form a snake, and snakes are a bad omen. In this argument, they have looked at the whole sky, focused on a particular area in that sky, and picked a bunch of stars that happen to make the shape that looks like a snake. And they suggest that something bad might now happen because of this snake in the sky. This is a fallacious argument. First of all, they have not demonstrated the significance of these stars. It is not good enough to say that these stars are significant just because they appear to form the shape of a snake. It does not explain why the many other stars in the sky are excluded or why it should even be a snake. I mean, we could just as easily look at the same part of the sky and form a completely different animal. From the perspective of someone on Earth, the stars in the sky look random. This should serve as a clue that the Texas sharpshooter fallacy is being used. This particular argument has observed stars in the sky and attempts to prescribe a meaning to the presence of these stars. But the same stars could exist by a seemingly random process. And this argument fails to sufficiently explain why it is not random. And obviously it fails to explain why they appear like a snake. When you see someone make this kind of argument, consider whether the clustering could be down to chance. Consider whether the clustering could be due to some other cause. And don't attribute any cause to the clustering. The existence of clustering alone is not sufficient to determine any cause. As always, politely point out the mistake, develop better arguments and have more productive discussions. I hope you now have a better understanding of this fallacy.